Hi everybody, I'm Bree the Plant Lady and today I am tackling my big front planters. These have been planted all summer long with a combination of coleus, plectranthus, and tomatoes. And they did amazingly well. In fact, my healthiest tomatoes were planted right along here. And that's because they never got rained on because the eve of the house prevented them from getting rain. Sure, they had to get watered on a regular basis. However, I've got hoses all right here. This is the easiest area of my entire yard to keep watered, which is why I concentrate so many containers here, including my live wall, which I have just posted a video about. So today I am going to get busy emptying these pots out because they had enormous tomatoes that grew like all the way up to the rafters. I'm actually gonna dump out all the soil in here because I think that um, those roots are gonna take a long time to actually break down and I, I don't wanna have to have these be high maintenance this winter. Usually I leave the soil in my pots, but because these tomatoes were so successful and like I, I literally just cut them down by accident yesterday, um, I wasn't intending to, I was just trying to cut the coleus and I accidentally cut a tomato stalk, which then led me to completely dissemble the entire thing. Um, usually though, I leave the potting soil, but that's because in all of these other pots, the tomatoes have come out like months ago. So their roots have already kind of started to decompose in place. Um, these I'm gonna make the exception and just dump the pots out and that's okay. They'll, they'll decompose out in the woodland in some of my giant brush piles. So then I'll fill these pots back up with fresh soil cube compost. Remember, that's all I use. I don't buy any potting soil at all, um, especially for winter plants like these. I'm gonna do container combinations with snapdragons, mustard, cardoon, and violas, and some additional um, parsley just to fill in the openings. So stay tuned to watch my process for how I reinvent my front planters for the winter season. And in case you were wondering, yes, the mosquitoes are still totally active and I need to go out back and put some bug spray on because they're all over me, even though I have long sleeves and pants on. So that's what, that's what winter in North Carolina is like. The bugs never really go away. Well, isn't that amazing? nematodes got into the pot and this pot has been on concrete <laughs> i'm amazed that these tomatoes did as well as they did now this is certainly not a severe nematode infestation but that absolutely is nematodes in a container sitting on concrete And just like magic, the whole front porch area looks clean and so much larger. So now I'm gonna fill my wheelbarrow up with soil cube and get these containers filled so I can get them planted for the cool season. Well, if you're wondering why I've had a slight of wardrobe change, it's because fire ants got into my shirt and I got all bit up in very tender places. It's extremely uncomfortable. So if you had to choose between mosquitoes and fire ants, mosquitoes are much easier than fire ants. They both suck, but nevertheless. And I have decided that instead of filling these pots all the way, because these winter crops don't need that volume of soil, I'm gonna do something that we used to do in Michigan. Um, and that's just invert a pot in and that will help reduce the amount of volume of soil that goes into the container. Now, I don't do this typically ever, um, and I will certainly take these out when I go to plant these for the summer because my summer crops will need all of that soil volume. But for the plants that I'm putting in for this season, none of these are gonna have really big root systems. So there's really no point in 
wasting my soil this way when I need it for lots of other things in my garden. So that's just kind of one way to save a little bit of material. In theory, it'll also make the pots lighter. Again, these pots are, you know, like seven gallon or maybe 10 gallon. Um, I would not recommend moving these by hand. Uh, if you want to move them around, use a dolly, but there's no sense in hurting yourself trying to move containers around. I've done it before and nobody wants a tweaked back. Every time you look at that pot, you're going to be reminded of a bad memory. So don't do that to yourself. Work smart, not hard. Uh, that's why I'm actually bringing the soil to the pots instead of filling the pots at the soil. Um, this is just a little bit easier for me to not have to move the containers as much. some final touches on these pots that line my front porch I wanted to add something that gave it some extra seasonal pizzazz and that is as easy as just cutting one of these big palm branches off this is Trachycarpus fortunii and I've done this for years they usually last somewhere like eight to ten weeks this is literally just a cut palm branch and you just basically can shove it into the pot. So I'm using it as a backdrop to make these containers a little bit more dramatic and kind of match the big plant that's here. And then Aiden has brought me some triple shred hardwood mulch. So we're just gonna top dress these little pots with this to give it the finished look. And then before I water, I'm gonna blow the space one more time because I got some soil, you know, onto the fresh concrete. And because I power washed today, I've activated my obsessive compulsive disorder. <laughs> I can't help it. It looks awesome, right? Yeah. It's so clean. I don't know why I don't power wash every day. <laughs> so these containers are just about wrapped, but as I was evaluating here, I realized I've got a hanging basket full of coleus and that's going to die soon. Yeah. So I think we should go ahead and take that down and replant it while we have all this stuff here. So you know that cardoon that I just sent you, said, had you take back to yeah. the greenhouse? Mm -hmm. Will you bring it back? Yes. <laughs> Thank you. All right. I'm going to get these mulched. I just use a really light top dress. This is just to make it so that if we get heavy rain, not that these planters really get rained on, but you know, with the hose and whatnot, just makes it so the soil doesn't splash. Um, also, I think it does give a nice finished look. Remember, I learned this trick from my good friend and pot guru, Rita Randolph in Tennessee. She makes the most amazing container gardens. And I just try to channel my inner Rita when I'm doing stuff like this. Um, and she always would say, like, a container is not finished until you mulch it. You can mulch it with anything. It's just basically top dressing. Um, you can use stones. You can use traditional mulch. Um, you know, you could use wood chips, whatever. But it really does give it a much nicer finished look. So we'll go through and do these. I think we'll mulch the trachycarpus bed that has a mint ground cover just to make it look tidy. We'll get that replanted and we'll call it a day for the out front area. Okay. Awesome. Well, there's nothing quite like the instant gratification of a newly planted container garden. And I know that these pots are gonna look awesome all winter long. If you found this video to be helpful, please give me a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe to the Breathe the Plant Lady YouTube channel and share it with your friends. And as always, thanks so much for watching everyone. Happy gardening.